Today is March 92nd. It's been a long week. No, just kidding. It's March 26th, and today I drew it in kind of a digital way, kind of like an old-fashioned alarm clock. I used to have numbers like that. I used to love those kind of numbers. So, let's see what I can do with that before I get started. Hungry monsters. These monsters are really hungry looking. Welcome to Mo Lunch Doodles. I'm so glad to have you here. And uh, I want to talk about Leonardo the Terrible Monster, which is one of my books. I'm going to show some of the original drawings and we're going to go over there so that you can see them. But first, I thought. Let's learn how to draw Leonardo because it's good to know what we're doing before we start looking at the drawing. So we have our piece of paper, Are you guys ready? Uh, there will also be in the Kennedy Center page a downloadable about how to draw Leonardo. It may be a little bit different than what I'm doing now, but that's okay. It'll be pretty much the same. I'm gonna grab a pen and like most of my characters, we start with the letter O. O. It's such a good letter. It's in the word mo. It makes a nice sound. And that is our head. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a letter U. You draw your U the way you draw. Right? And now we do two smaller O's, small O here, small O here, ooh, ooh. and we're going to do a number one that fell down. Leonardo is a little bit scared. And then like we've done a couple other times, we're going to take a small letter M, a really small one, break it in half and put it on either side like that. And I kick with little horns. And then I'm going to put the dots for the eye pretty small and right in the middle. Dot, dot. And then two little dots here. Dot, dot. For the nose. So Leonardo looks a little freaked out. I find sometimes you think that when you draw a cartoon that the bigger the eyes are, the more scared they are. But sometimes if you draw them smaller, they look a little bit more scared. Now, Leonardo has fur, so what I would do with this usually is I would just do this with a light blue pencil and then afterwards go on top and make wiggle waggles. Fur, 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 and in direction. See, wiggle waggle going down. Fur, 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 fur. And here he's got a part down the middle, wiggle waggle. And here, wiggle waggle and then a couple straight lines for the horns come out. Oh, and I want to make sure that I write my name so that I know, when I look at that later, who drew that. That's my Leonardo the Terrible Monster. Well, you know, once you make a line, sometimes it's okay to make a line over it, to use it as a guide, to show people what your process is. And if you want Leonardo to look tired, like maybe some of the grown-ups in your life right now are tired. Just put two little lines under the eyes, and then they, Leonardo's looking a little tired. Well, should we go see what the drawings for Leonardo the Terrible Monster are like? Because it's kind of interesting to show you the originals, and something interesting happened when I made that book. So I'm coming over here. All right. Now I've got to find it in these shelves. 
All right, let's see. Unlimited squirrels. No, nope, we're going to talk about that. Those later, I think. Naked mole rat. Nope, nope. Leonardo the Terrible Monster. You see right here. It says Leonardo the Terrible Monster. And then about 10 years after I made this book, I made a sequel called Sam the Most Scaredy Cat Kid in the Whole World. And I think both of these books are in there. All right. Oh, there's the actual book. There's Leonardo. Pretty much like you drew them. I like that. Let's see if we got a picture. There's Leonardo. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, this is the sheet for Sam. This book is a little bit longer. Usually a picture book has 40 surfaces. This one has 48. So I had an extra eight pages to play with. And these are my early drawings, my blues. And did I scan those? And did I lay in the words? And did I revise? And then the inks and scan and color and all these different things. Pretty big chart. The sequel I finished up in September of 2016. And I made a model sheet of Sam and Leonardo who look a little different than they do in the first book because they've been so many years, they got a little older. And then they had this, their new friends, Carrie. And you see, I thought Einstein, no, I named it Frankenthaler because one of my favorite artists is Helen Frankenthaler. And then I decided to give Frankenthaler some braces to make Frankenthaler the monster look younger. Because I had learned a lesson in the first book. Here are some drawings in the first book of Leonardo yelling and freaking out Sam. And see that says 71504 freak out number one. Here, this is this is in the frame. It must have in an exhibit or so. And here is Leonardo in a bag trying to scare and then there's Leonardo. Now let's let's look at the book. We'll see if we can get to that page and see if we can spot any differences. Let's see. Okay. So that's the drawing. It's pretty much the same size. The color of the ink is brown. I did that digitally because I wanted him to sink in a little bit more. I didn't want him to be as strong because he's nervous. And I changed some of the colors there. But there's one big thing. Look at that. When I finished this book, my editor and my agent and everyone who saw it said the same thing. You know, Mo, I, I kind of like it, but I'm not sure about Leonardo. Leonardo doesn't look scared. Leonardo doesn't look vulnerable. Look, see? And that's because Leonardo's horns were too big. And the book was just about to go to the publishers. It was almost too late. And then I realized at that point, oh man, what Leonardo needs is a hornectomy. So I gave Leonardo smaller horns. I fixed all the drawings and just drew for each page very quickly. Oh, there's the hidden pigeon that goes into Hector. If you're looking in the book for the hidden pigeon, that's the Hector page. I drew all these little horns so that Leonardo would look like this would look younger and a little bit more scared. So when somebody asks me, Mo, do you write the book or draw the book first? They're both the same thing. So this book wouldn't work if Leonardo had those super big horns. So making those smaller horns is a type of writing, a type of expressing what needs to happen in the book. So drawing is writing and writing is drawing. Oh my God. Well, I learned my lesson there and then I forgot it again. And then I ended up giving Frank and Fowler braces, which helped. So these are all the different roughs and drawings. This is from the sequel. I had a lot of fun drawing this book. These characters are doing lots of silly things. They like different things, see? 
Carrie loves rock and roll. Sam is a little bit more Baroque in his musical tastes. And there we go. You know what it's right in there. Okay. That was kind of fun to see. So when you're writing a story or you're making something, sometimes there's something not quite right about it and you can't figure it out. And sometimes it's not your job to figure it out. It's your job to be open and to be listening and to let people like your editor or your agent or people that you live with or your art director tell you, you know, I think that could be a little bit better. Or there's something about this that doesn't work and I don't know why. And then in the revision, because of their help, you get to make a better story. And ultimately, that's the idea. You want to make as good a story as you can. You want to communicate to your audience as best you can. All right, question time. I love question time. Let's see what we've got today. Um, Connor, age five, says, how many pigeons have you drawn in your lifetime? Well, Connor, um, I hope to be alive for a lot longer, so I cannot give you a definitive answer, right? But I've drawn a lot of pigeons. Most of them have been the same pigeon. Most of them have been the pigeon that you know from the book. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Sometimes people ask me, what is the pigeon's name? Well, his first name is The, and his last name is Pigeon. So, a lot of pigeons. Uh, Jesse says, can the pigeon drive a truck? That is a hard-hitting question. And like most people who get hard-hitting questions, I'm going to prevaricate. And I'm going to say, why don't you figure that out? Why don't you make a story about the pigeon trying to drive a truck? Um, Griffin is from Michigan and age seven, both things. I love to play the drums. Do you play an instrument? Oh, Griffin, I would love to hear your drum playing one day. I don't play an instrument, but I do like to doodle to music. And before all of this craziness happened, I was going to be working with a jazz musician named Jason Moran, and I was going to make drawings while Jason and his band made music. Because I think that drawing and doodling and jazz music have a lot of things in common. They're about improvising, they're about communicating, they're about line, and they're about rhythm. And you as a drummer probably know a thing or two about rhythm. All right. Uh, Gazelle asks, do you eat a snack when you're creatively stuck? <laughs> Gazelle, if I ate a snack while I was creatively stuck, I would be many, many pounds heavier than I am. What I do when I'm creatively stuck is I try to unstick myself. And that means go to another place, maybe go to another room, or walk around, or maybe I'll get a cup of tea. Sometimes I do that. If I can walk outside, I'll take a walk, and that will help me get unstuck. Oh, look, the next question is similar. Do you ever work on your books outside? As Sarah in Arizona, Sarah is eight. Sarah, yes, I do. I write when I walk. And so usually for people who live in my neighborhood, they may see me walking my studio assistant and I'll be walking and walking and they may say hi and I'm like, I don't really pay attention because I'm writing. When I'm walking with my studio assistant, we are writing together. And so what that means is I kind of get lost in that way. So if you see me walking with my studio assistant, don't worry if I don't look at you or say hi, I'm probably writing a story in my head. All right, um, I have a four-year-old named Edwin who says, how do you choose the colors you make your characters? And that is a very good question. And it goes to revision. Sometimes I choose the colors and they work out just great. And sometimes they don't. And so when I'm coming up with a new character, what I'm really doing is auditioning that character. I'm figuring out what they wear and what sort of pen I use and what sort of colors I use. And I don't always get it right. Um, so Edwin, actually Edwin, 
I want to show you an example of that one case from Manhattan, because I think this is probably the best way. It's not unlike Leonardo the Terrible Monster. I'm going here. I made a book a, a while ago called Hooray for Amanda and Her Alligator. Let's see if I can find that. Uh, mm -hmm. That was Leonardo. Make it more right. Uh, others. Uh, a lot of squirrels. Uh, time to say P. We already saw him and that's, oh, there we go. Why don't you come on? Oh, it's all the way down here. Oh, look, the drawer matches my shoes. That's helpful. All right, we're down here. Amanda and her alligator. Oh, wow. That was a lot of work. This was March 11th, 2010. Mar uh, May then again. All right, so this is about 10 years ago that I was making this. There were so many different things that had to happen in this one. And there are a lot of surfaces, 72 surfaces. This book, sort of like a picture book and sort of like a chapter book. So it has got a lot more story than most of my picture books. See, it's got six and a half little stories. So when I started doing this, I knew I wanted to make it watercolor. And I first made the blues. Remember we talked about these are the first sketches and some of the reds are revisions. Figuring out what page they are. There's Amanda reading with alligator. There's Amanda playing with alligator. There's Amanda hugging alligator. That I didn't like that Amanda. There is alligator bored. Oh, alligator gets so bored in this book. What a bored alligator. I. I don't know if you've ever gotten bored, but an alligator gets bored. But then alligator finds ways to dance and ways to be a little bit annoying. And alligator ends up meeting a panda. Uh, alligator's not a big panda fan in the beginning. So I knew what I wanted to do was ink these books like this with a brush pen on watercolor paper and then do the coloring with watercolors separate, right? Because I wanted to be able to play with the stuff. So there we see there's a drawing, but that's the color as a separate level. I painted them all separate. And the reason I did that, well, I don't even know why I did it, but I really am glad that I did because let's get some more tests. Oh, let's see. Yeah. There we go. Ah, there. So I could do a couple different colors to like see if I got the texture that I wanted and play around with the backgrounds. And what happened was, look at this. It's very green. It's the color of alligators. But uh, the alligator in Amanda and our alligator is not a real alligator. It's a stuffed toy. It's a toy that only costs seven cents. And so when I was making the book and I did an early draft and the alligator was green, it looked like a real alligator because all my drawings are pretty simple. So then I changed all those colors and made it a little bit more purple so that it might feel and look not real and feel like a toy. Let's see, here's a, some tests. That's a test on Panda to see what colors I wanted the Panda to be. Let's see. Pandas at the end of the book. Look, wow, not even close, right? Gray and blue, and the panda ended up being yellow and brown. So, there we go. So, much like figuring out the drawings, the color is part of the writing. The color is part of the story, and I have to experiment until I get it right. It's a good question. Ah, oh, boy, old man. Ah, oh, just gonna hobble on. Oh, hobble, hobble, oh, hobble, hobble. All right. Well, that was fun. Well, time to do some doodling before we end. I thought, let's draw some monsters, all different types of monsters to draw. And I think about 
Six years ago or so, I went to an exhibit in a museum because I love museums and I love exhibits. And this one was about a movie called Monsters, Inc., which is a movie that I like very well. And in that movie, they had lots of different artists in the beginning of the process drawing monsters because they wanted to figure out what the monsters were like. And they asked artists from everywhere, all kinds of really great artists. They didn't ask me, but that, that's okay. Um, they asked all these great artists, and the artists made incredible monsters, but nothing really seemed to click. And one of the directors, a guy named Pete Doctor, who is an amazing guy and taller than me, this is what he did. And he said, those are the monsters. That's our template. Let's start from there. And that's all it took because they're basic shapes. And what he did was he took something that was so complex and all these different things and he made it simple. And I think about this often. I think that this is my job too. Because simple and easy are not the same things. As a matter of fact, simple and easy are opposites. It is not easy finding the simplest way to make things. But once you've done that, you can create all kinds of really fun, interesting things. So, there's a little monster. Oh, let me write this down. I know that it's mine when I see it later that I drew it. So, this is just an example. I am now going to draw some doodles with you. Let's draw some monsters and let's think about really simple shapes. And how those can be monsters. All right, you guys ready? You got your paper, you got your pen? All right, let's do it. This guy has got big long legs. And let's see. I like, I like doing these funny patterns on the legs. Remind me maybe a little bit of Big Bird. Alright. Okay, now that's one monster. Mine. How are yours going? Oh can't wait. Let me know. Let me take a look to see how you're doing. We're in the middle of it, but oh yeah. I like how you eat. Yours look. They look very you -y, like you made them. All right, I'm gonna go back and do a couple more. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Maybe this shape is just an eye, and that's a mouth. It's got these four little legs. I'm gonna put this one away. It's what I'm gonna ink. Do a little shading. And those eyes, it's a really buggy guy. There we go. Boop, boop. There we go. These are my shape monsters. Oh, I forgot to write my name. I have to write my name so that I remember who made it. You should write your name on your shape monsters. All right, why don't you hold that up? Let's see. Oh, yeah. I like that. Right. Well, maybe some of these shape monsters could have an adventure with Leonardo the Terrible Monster. Maybe you could create... Well, I've already done the sequel, so after the sequel would be the trequel or the for fortable. You can make another story with shapes of your own. Well, that is it for today, March 26th. I hope that you continue to draw and make stories, and I hope that all of the big people are drawing as well and making their own monsters, and we'll see you tomorrow.